You probably know that one of the very best ways to save money on a cruise is by booking an inside cabin, but are they for you? Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, have you been wondering if an inside cabin might just be for you? I know we all hear that an inside cabin is a really good way to save money on a cruise. And I have to say, over the last little while, I've been checking out the cruise prices and I'm noticing a bigger and bigger discrepancy between the price of an interior cabin and a balcony cabin. This might be especially true after the last year when some people have said, well, they've sworn off inside cabins, but there are some really good reasons to choose an inside cabin beyond simply the price, although that's a very good reason. And there are some reasons not to, so it definitely is not for everybody. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the pros, the cons, the reasons that you might wanna book an inside cabin, and I think there's a good reason that you should in some cases, and the times that you won't want to. Now, before I get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give the video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, let's get started. Reason number one, an inside cabin is definitely a money saver. Now, sometimes a balcony cabin can actually cost double the amount of an inside cabin. Therefore, the conclusion is if you take an inside cabin, you can cruise twice as much for the same amount of money. That is a very good reason in itself. But sometimes you're actually in an inside cabin, not really getting a different experience than you would get in an ocean view or a balcony. Now, if you do have a suite, you are getting something different. But when you're in an inside cabin, an ocean view cabin or a balcony cabin, these services on the cruise ship are going to be the same, meaning your dining services are going to be the same. You're going to have access to all the same amenities on the cruise ship. So whether it's water slides, whether it's the pool, whether it's all of the different things on the cruise ship, that is all going to be exactly the same, no matter the type of cabin that you're in. Number two, if you think you'll only be in your cabin to change your clothes and to sleep. And honestly, there are a lot of people that are like that. Maybe you think that you'll wake up early in the morning, you're going to go for breakfast, then you're going to hang out at the pool, you're going to do all of the activities, maybe go to bingo, maybe go back to your room, your cabin and change your clothes, get ready for dinner and then be back out again and then to the shows and to the disco. And if you're going to be back at your cabin late at night, having an ocean view or even a balcony cabin might actually be a waste of money. So choose that inside cabin. Number three, if you're sailing with young children. Now, I'm not sure why this isn't talked about more, but if you are a family and you're sailing with young children, you might want to stay in an inside cabin or otherwise an ocean view cabin and perhaps skip a balcony. Now, Cruise ships are very safe, so let me know, please, about your own experience if you do sail with kids in a balcony. But my concern always was that if I had a balcony cabin and I had my children with me and I did have boys, that, well, I would have to supervise them all the time. Now, of course, I did supervise them. They didn't stay in the cabin by themselves, but maybe I would be in the shower or maybe I'd be doing something. I wouldn't want them to be on the balcony by themselves, maybe climbing up on chairs. And even though there's a lock on the balcony doors, that was just one worry that I didn't want to have. So I think if you have very young children that need to be supervised, you're going to save yourself a little bit of a worry by getting an inside cabin. Number four, if you love sleeping in total darkness. Now there are many people who love sleeping with blackout curtains and making sure that the room is as dark as possible. So that is something that when you have an inside cabin, you literally have no natural light at all. So you will be in the darkest spot that you could ever imagine. So if you love this, you will love an inside cabin. And many people do report that they sleep better in an inside cabin than anywhere else on the ship. Now I do have a little tip if you are a little bit concerned about the darkness in an inside cabin when it comes to the morning. So one of the things that you might want to do is first of all, you might want to bring a travel alarm clock or simply set your phone alarm for the morning time. But as well, if you like a little bit of light, what you can do is you can leave the bathroom door open just a little teeny bit, and you can also turn the TV on. You can turn it to like the bridge camera. There's usually a channel where you can see the bridge. And as the sun comes up, your cabin will actually be a little bit light as well. Now you might also want to bring a motion sensor nightlight. That is really good if you think that you might get up during the night to go to the bathroom, but you still want the room to be dark other than that, I'll leave a link for that item and other popular cruise essentials in the description below. Number five, you get a choice of cruise cabins. Now inside cabins are actually all over the cruise ship. So they're down at the bottom 
of the cruise ship. They're at the top of the cruise ship. If you prefer that, they're at the front, at the back. So you literally can choose a cabin almost anywhere on the cruise ship, depending on your preference. Now, if you're concerned about motion sickness and really want to hedge your bets to have the least chance of being seasick, then you might want to try to get a cabin that is midship, maybe around deck eight, deck nine, something that's mid in the center of the ship and that's mid front and back as well. Number six, you can find some really unique cabins that are absolutely worth it and you might like better than some other cabins on a cruise ship. An example of this is some of Royal Caribbean's cruise ships actually have interior cabins that look at the promenade in the center of the cruise ship. I think these are some of the very best cabins. They're roomy, they're light, and they're priced at the price of an inside cabin. Other cabins also on Royal Caribbean are their virtual balconies. That is so cool. The wall actually looks like a balcony. Number seven, if you have a port intensive itinerary. Now I know there are some people who will say on certain itineraries that you should definitely get a balcony that you will miss out if you don't. However, there are sometimes itineraries where you're gonna be off the cruise ship almost every day of the sailing. And if that's the case, you might be better off, well, not getting a balcony, getting an inside cabin, for example, and spending the money that you've saved on excursions. Now, in our case, we actually did a Mediterranean cruise a few years ago. It was 11 days, and out of the 11 days, we actually hit eight days at cruise ports. Amazing itinerary. But of course, we were very busy, and we were off the ship most of the time. So we were really happy that we got an inside cabin. The price was awesome, and we were able to use that couple thousand dollars that we saved on the cruise to do all of those excursions that we wanted to do. And on those days that we were on the ship, being completely honest, we slept in a little bit and then we just hung out at the pool and relaxed and we didn't find that we missed a balcony at all if you have teens or young adults you might want to get them the inside cabin this is a little tip and you might want to get a balcony cabin right across the hall for mom and dad so then you do still have that balcony cabin that everybody can hang out on maybe you can have appetizers before dinner everybody can go in and out as they please but the teens still have their inside cabin and you save that money by getting them the less expensive cabin. Now, when should you not get an inside cabin? Even though I think inside cabins are a great value, there are some times that you might not wanna get them. Now, on some itineraries, the scenery, the landscape is just so worth it that you might want to get an outside cabin or even better, a balcony cabin. So an example of that would be an Alaska itinerary. You might just spend a lot of time on your balcony when you're looking at the glaciers and that experience might be well worth it to get that more expensive cabin when there's a promotion. Now, sometimes cruise lines do actually have a promotion where ocean view cabins might be priced at the price of inside cabins or even balcony pricing might not be that different from inside cabins. And if the availability of inside cabins, well, if there's not many inside cabins left, the price of the balcony cabin sometimes might even be less. So always check just in case. You might also not want an inside cabin if you're on a super busy and super active ship. So if you're on a ship where there's lots of bells and whistles, it might sound super exciting. Maybe you think you won't be in your cabin very much and that's still a reason to get an inside cabin. But if you think that you might want some time away from all of the noise and the hustle and bustle and the activity going on in the cruise ship, sometimes having your own private space, your own, well, balcony, which is really your own piece of ocean view real estate for that time while you're on your cruise, it might be well worth it. And we did find that over the years, we were on some cruises where it was so exciting on the cruise ship itself. An example of this is the Norwegian Getaway and the Norwegian Breakaway and the Oasis as well. But we really appreciated having the balconies to get away from it all. Now I do have one more tip. If you're planning on cruising in an inside cabin and you really wanna save money, it's to take a look at the guarantee cabins. Now the guarantee cabins are really the same as any standard inside cabin. The only difference is you won't know the location of that cabin, it's the cruise line that's gonna choose it for you, but it is gonna be less expensive. So if you wanna cruise for less, this is the absolute best and cheapest way to do so. Now, I'd love to know from you, do you have any questions about cruising in an inside cabin? Have you cruised in an inside cabin before? And what do you think? Please let me know in the comments below. Now I'm gonna leave a video right after this one all about 50 cruise hacks that you need to know if you are going on a cruise. Now, if you did like this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now. Happy future cruising.